Hello, my name is Nicholas Cohen, and I'm very excited to be teaching you the first module in our limited obstetrics ultrasound course for the Family Medicine Residency Curriculum Resource and the Society of Teachers of Family Medicine and the Association of Family Medicine Residency Directors. Our objectives are to define point of care ultrasound, which I'll call from now on POCUS, to review the history and development of POCUS to become familiar with this course and to learn how to integrate this course into a program at your site. The focus or point of care ultrasound is ultrasound that's performed and interpreted by the clinician at the bedside. In an article in the, point of, in the New England Journal of Medicine, this technology was referred to as the stethoscope of the 21st century. In distinction to a formal ultrasound done in the radiology suite, point of care ultrasound is used to answer a specific question. For example, does is this baby vertex or breech? While a more formal ultrasound would include a complete anatomy scan, a scan of the ovaries, a scan of um, gestational age, etc. Furthermore, an, an additional use of point of care ultrasound is to improve the safety of procedures at the bedside. The growth, of, the growth of point of care ultrasound. Point of care ultrasound used by primary care physicians has been made possible by the technology, which has become increasingly more compact, increasingly more affordable, and increasingly easy to use. Ultrasound machines can be purchased used for less than $20,000 and can offer a wide variety of applications. Along with the increasing affordability and accessibility of ultrasound has been a growth in training for ultrasound and research on the use of ultrasound in the point of care setting. In a search of PubMed articles looking for ultrasound education, there were 350 articles in 2001, over 1,000 in 2011. Ultrasound has become, in the last 10 years, part of the standard training for medical students. These are only some of the programs that exist currently as of 2013, where Medical students are trained in point of care ultrasound as part of their core curriculum. Along with this training and along with the increased accessibility of ultrasound by the primary care physician and the medical student is studies that have validated the use of ultrasound. Looking over the past 10 years in a literature search performed by the author, there are a variety of studies focused on a variety of different different applications that validated the use of ultrasound in the clinical setting by the non-radiologist. In a memorable study in, de in detecting cardiac pathology, the compared to the gold standard, which was a standard ultrasound in the radiology suite, medical students with limited training were able to detect 75% of pathology using the point of care ultrasound compared to board certified cardiologists using their stethoscope who were, who were able to detect only 49% of the pathology. And in addition to the validation of, of point of care ultrasound for the non-radiologist in the clinical setting, is a host of literature, a host of organizational support for point of care ultrasound. In 2001, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality published the article, Making Healthcare Safer, Critical Analysis of Patient Safety Practices. In this document, they identified 10 patient safety practices that were the most highly rated, meaning they had the most evidence to support improving the safety of patient care. 
use of real-time ultrasound guidance during central line insertion to prevent complications was on the, this list of top 11 practices to make healthcare safer. In the end of 2012, the AAMC, during their annual, annual meeting, sponsored an ultrasound workshop, recognizing that it is essential, in their words, to optimize the available technology to enhance the teaching and practice of medicine, and specifically with the use of point of care ultrasound. The American College of Emergency Physicians has really been a leader in terms of non-radiologist specialty promoting the use of ultrasound for their constituents. In fact, the ACGME mandates competency in ultrasound for all emergency medicine residents. In this policy statement by the American College of Emergency Fit Physicians, published in 2008, there is detailed description of the evidence behind all of the focused applications of point of care ultrasound in the emergency setting and, spe and specific recommendations for standards of training for both residents and practicing physicians. Another organization to support the use of handheld ultrasound is American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association. In their document on the clinical competence of uh, statement on echocardiography, they have a section on hand-carried ultrasound, or HSU, and they specify specific standards for training in this technology. One of the most interesting developments happened recently. In the beginning of 2013, the American College of Surgeons developed exported courses, which they make available to any surgeon, resident or practicing physician. In these modules, they provide online exams as well as specific course instruction and curricula for any program that wishes to train their residents or practicing physicians in ultrasound. They currently have four ultrasound courses available, ultrasound for residents, fast ultrasound, focused echo, ICU ultrasound applications, and thyroid and parathyroid ultrasound. What makes the American College of Surgeons unique in, this, in, in offering this is that they've not only established guidelines like the American College of Emergency Physicians, but they've actually provided the curriculum to teach physicians, and they've actually provided the, pre, the, the post test to ensure competency in this skill. This is similar to the ALSO training offered by the American Academy of Family Practice. And in terms of family medicine, the STFM published a required procedural training and family medicine residency consensus statement, wherein they stated that all residents must be able to perform basic prenatal ultrasound by the time they graduate, and they need to have the opportunity to be trained and to be able to perform independently advanced prenatal ultrasound, which they included anatomy and biometry. The American Academy of Family Practice has a statement, ultrasonography, diagnostic, and ob a physician paper, which gives some description of the training and credentialing of family physicians not in diagnostic ob ultrasonography. They recommend ultrasound as a skill that enhances, they recommend the training in ultrasound for family physicians as a skill that enhances the diagnostic and therapeutic capabilities of family physicians. And in the ALSO course, the Advanced Life Support and Obstetrics course sponsored by the AFP, there is an optional workstation for diagnostic ultrasound. Along with this institutional support for point of care ultrasound is the fact that it has become more and more reimbursed and billed for by non-radiologists. In this study, in this article in 2009, they described ultrasound being performed by non-radiologists as consisting of 41% of all non-cardiac ultrasound that was reimbursed by Medicare. In addition, the article describes that over the past 10 years, there's been a proportionally larger growth in ultrasound billed by non-radiologists compared to radiologists, where ultrasound increased by 17% by radiologists and 
28% for non-radiology. We're now going to move to an introduction of this course. The course was initially designed out of a perceived need for ultrasound training in family medicine. In an article published in 1994, which queried residency family medicine program directors, they identified in 53% of, 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 of respondents unmet need for training in obstetric sonography. With a literature search that I've performed over the past 10 years, looking at all of the validation studies of point-of-care ultrasound by non-radiologists, only 1.5% of these studies involved family medicine residents or practicing physicians. Again, pointing to a, a, a lack of training or a lack of validation in the literature of family medicine practitioners using point of care ultrasound. We've described our curriculum at multiple conferences across the country in family medicine, and these stars represent programs that have come up to us particularly interested in adopting a training program for ultrasound. So this is further highlighting the need for ultrasound training in family medicine. Moving on to the, the content of the course, the curriculum that is taught here is based on national guidelines from the Association, the American Registry of Diagnostic Medical Sonographers, ACOG, American Society of Echocardiography, the American Institute of Ultrasound and Medicine, and the American College of Radiology. The modules presented here are taught by expert faculty with recognition in teaching. This curriculum is designed to be competency-based, so instead of just showing learners modules that hopefully they'll understand, there are pre and post tests for the online modules. There's a hands-on evaluation checklist for a hands-on evaluation, and then there's actual logs to ensure that learners are able to document a given number of procedures. The curriculum, the curriculum has been validated at University Hospital's Case Medical Center and Case Western Reserve School of Medicine, where all years of medical students and all levels of family medicine resident and physician achieved significant knowledge gains between the pre and this curriculum has been presented has been presented at multiple national forums sponsored by the family the SPSM and the ASP. The curriculum is designed to be easily adopted at, so just to give you a bit of logistics on the course, for each, there are prerequisite modules which include this introduction and the ultrasound physics and instrumentation module. After completing these prerequisites, learners can use, can choose to take any of the focused application modules, which include obstetrics modules, as well as cardiology, abdominal and peripheral vascular, musculoskeletal. Each module begins with a pretest, a lecture, a post-test, a hands-on evaluation, and a procedure log to document procedures over time. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed these.